do 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 This is what happens when you don't build like wheelchair accessible spaces and the door just becomes like a giant barrier to your entire existence. Prepare to witness my struggle, my friends. If I'm lucky, someone just helps me out. If I'm not lucky, I do this. And then a little more forward. And then I run myself over a little. And then we're clear. Oh, so right now I'm on turtle speed. I'm gonna go fast now, so I'll see you guys. Bye. I flew in day one to prepare for the parliament, and immediately upon exiting the hotel, I tripped, fell, and then uh, hurt my leg. We're going to the parliament of the world's religions. I spent about nine and a half hours in the emergency room. I can't stand on it, so in the meantime, I get to ride this electronic scooter and go everywhere without having to uh, like step on my feet. All right, we go. Today's the second day of the parliaments of the world's religions. Today we were really honing in on two specific conversations so far. Hi everyone, good morning. I represent Siji, and in Chinese that translates to compassionate and relief. The first was a conversation unpacking what took place at the latest UN FCCC climate change conference in Egypt. The COP process needs to better ensure that people who actually do the work are there and their voices are represented. One of my jobs in Canada is public engagement on climate change, so I really appreciated what I heard about bringing in the voices of youth, the voices of Indigenous people, of women, uh, people of colour. What I found very interesting were the people who are activists and going to the international conferences. It's a fine line to walk of, we really need that seat at the table, but at the same time, do we want to encourage these conferences to keep happening the way that they are? If we're not at the table, then it's going to be fossil fuel companies and other private sector that will take up that space. We're going to reduce the amount of fossil fuel emissions, but we replace it with systems that are still bound in values of extraction and exploitation. We don't necessarily take us to a better place. We're in the photo, we're going to say 3, 2, 1, Siji, okay? 3, 2, 1, Siji! That's the main hall, and then we're going to be on the left-hand side over here. Hello, hello, hello! I bring speaker! Our second session was really focused on how do we build better health systems. Thank you all for being here today with us. We brought together panelists from different faith and secular organizations to become closer aligned. Alzheimer's disease and other dementias affects over six million people across the United States. The way we can really address it is collectively. All of us are facing the same challenges. When we're looking at people in communities that face certain diseases, how do we elevate their voices is constantly a challenge. Whether it's the people who are experiencing the disease or it's the caregivers that are being exhausted. I'm wondering how in your systems are you addressing this, taking care of the people who take care of others. Nurses are very heavily stressed. Talk to them, sit down with them. Life was giving me a signal that I need to slow down a bit. But in the next couple of days, I'm really excited to explore how we as an interfaith movement can create a better world and ensure that the values of Buddhism are present in all societies. Mm -hmm.